What's, What's up, guys? On this week's show, be my victim. Surprise. And GDC 2020 is canceled? All that and more on this episode of One Giant Leap for Geeks. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for Geeks. Welcome to another episode of OGLFG, where we talk about movies, video games, and all things in geek culture. I'm your host, Mike C Squared, and with me is my co-host, DJ Melly Mel. Hey! Before we get started, I want to let you know if you enjoy the show, tell some friends about us, share us on your social media, whatever you choose to do, just know that you're helping us let others know about the best damn podcast they probably never heard of. Now, if you want to talk to us, the show is on Twitter at Giant Leap, the number four geeks, or you can get a hold of our resident DJ Melly Mel at Froggy Beaver. What you been doing? Uh, let's see. This week was less eventful than others past, but still pretty cool. Um, I've been doing lots and lots of wedding stuff this week. Mm -hmm. So unless you've been living under a rock, everybody should know at this point that I I'm getting married, mm -hmm. and I'm doing 90% of everything on our own, mm -hmm. so that's exciting. Um, I went and bought some flowers for my bouquet and my throwaway bouquet, and then I've also bought like some ribbon and some tooling and some just glittery stuff, and then I got some paper so that I can do the invitations up and the RSVP cards. I'm very excited about that. Um, thinking about like getting a tablet or something so that it's easier to do. That I mean, because I can do them on my phone, but it's really a pain in the butt. So I would m almost rather have like something bigger that I can kind of style and design and play with like <laughs> Photoshop a little bit easier than. Uh, what I got now. So we're going to, we're going to see uh T money and I have some big plans coming up in the next couple of weeks. And that's kind of like taking all of our extra money at the, at the moment. Um, he's got his side business going, which uh, T buds Cajun cuisine that is going kind of up and running, but in it's, it's like a baby stage, and so we're kind of crawling. Still, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, deal. that was uh, pretty exciting. We did that this hey, week. I am a big... Big proponent, proponent of T-Bud's food. entrepreneurship. Oh, yes, yes, in, yes. In general, but yes, specifically <laughs> his food as well, yes. Um, We are actually going to be out at the St. Patrick's Day Parade mm -hmm. on Sunday the 15th in nice. Bay City. So nice. if you're in the area, you should probably come check us out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come you get should. some really good food by Tea Money. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so uh, like we just, we've had, I don't know, it was like we had a kind of a, not a slow week because we never have a slow week, but <laughs> we just, I took off with wedding stuff sure. and he took off with the business and I'm like, okay, let's, you know, jump full feet into the puddle because that's what we do. So nice. would you expect anything less? No. Probably no. not. But yeah, so we're between doing stuff up for the wedding and doing stuff up for his, our, our business. Um, pretty busy. Okay. Nice. Nice. I expect it to be like that for the next couple weeks. So. Mm -hmm. And as usual, um, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Well, you and know, what I next did, weekend you can come uh, out and you can see us at the parade, I can, I and can. then you can be I like, can. hey, we were here, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it'd be kind of cool to see what other listeners in the area come out, and they're like, hey, I listened to you, so right. that might be might it's be like something. You were totally not what I was picturing in my head. Oh, probably not. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that. Um, uh, I, I fall short of many, many listener <laughs> expectations. I, say, I don't know. If I don't it's give good a shit, or bad though. bad one way or another. No. Nah. Um, what about you? What were you doing? I'm like. No, no. Monopolizing no, all of no, what you've fine. been doing here. Um, Not a whole lot, honestly. <laughs> I, 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 I've been playing a lot of video games. Obviously, I've been streaming a lot. Well, go, that's good. Yeah, working on the say. Twitch. Yeah, go, go check out the channel, you know, on Twitch, Mike C Squared. Uh, but. 
we did the drunk stream uh, a week ago, and that was really yes, fun. Yes, that was great. And I am planning, we'll see, but I'm planning on trying to do it again. Okay. This, this coming weekend, so. Okay, okay. Stay tuned for that, perhaps. Uh, Might be a night to come hang out and it was, you it was, do it like it a, a Friday time. night or Saturday night. Yeah, I think, I think it's Friday. Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But. Uh, other oh, than that, I can't Friday, but oh. maybe another time. Well, still, yeah. Anyways, uh, we might make it a thing and see how it goes. Okay, okay. But because I've been playing games a lot, I have been, you know, reading all these articles and stuff, and we're gonna talk about something related to that as well. Okay. About how, you know, coronavirus is like <laughs> affecting like the video game I'm industry sorry. because like people who are, like, overseas that make a lot of, like, the processors and stuff like that right, for, right. you know, consoles. And They've been having to work from, like, home PCs. and stuff. Yeah, you know, because it's, like, and it's slowing production down, and, and they're worried that it may get to a point to where they're going to run out of stuff because, you know, like, like the people who manufacture it and put it together, you know, are, are in some countries that are, like, the most highly affected, right. you know, currently by it. So it's Do like, we have uh, any international listeners that in that uh, in, area in, in that area i would like to know yeah no if, if you're in any of the um like more heavily highly affected, affected areas, areas of the coronavirus yeah, the world, yeah where the coronavirus is really being or, or is they're calling it um they changed the name it's like C- covid yeah, C- R- it's something 19 yeah or C-O-V- crv yeah. 19 i think that's a, yeah you clearly we do not need to be in charge of any kind of protection from anybody from anything because no. we can't even tell you what the shit's called properly. But yeah, I, and and I thought that that was really interesting and just how these kind of things will ripple out and affect different areas of life that you won't immediately mm-hmm. think about because you know when I think of some kind of you know outbreak of something or other, the last thing I think of is like. But my games, though, you know, it's like right, right. But, I don't go out in public. I, I don't you know, need to worry it's, about that. It, it, it's one of those things where it's like it will have you know domino effect, butterfly sure, effect, sure. whatever you want to call it, to things that are more connected than you realize. Right. But, you know, aesthetically, you're like, oh, well, you know, it's just whatever. So I, I've been like thinking about that a lot, and just like how people are responding to it. In Mm -hmm. the video game industry on different levels, you know, from, you know, uh, production of games and conventions and things like that, Mm -hmm. which we'll talk about a little bit later. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. I've just been going down a rabbit hole of stuff like that. So, but I mean, hey, we got to keep it at least a little relevant. It can't be all make believe yeah oh and and spoilers for um god of war if on ps4 if you haven't played it sorry uh i am finally to the point where kratos gets his um uh blades back because the whole game up to this point he's just had the axe and i was just like this is cool and all because you know i feel kind of like the war i can call it back and stuff like that's kind of cool you know free stuff like yeah yeah that's cool but i'm like but the blades, though. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, blades, the blades are badass. The flames and shit. I was like, oh, that He's shit was fire. He's got them on the chains. I know. I was like, I missed that. That was that was his signature weapon in every game. And it was weird playing with Kratos and having such a drastically different fighting style. But I finally got to the point in the story where he has to dig them back out and use them again. And I had to relearn how to fight yeah, with them. Yeah, oh yeah. Once you've used the axe for a while, you're like... Yeah, you know, and, and even, even then... You know, I the controls are different mm-hmm. the whole way through. So even once I got like the combos kind of right. back down, it was still like because I'm using the triggers yep, the whole time. Yep, it's, yep. it's weird. I know T Money had um, some craziness go like when he started to play too, and he's like, "This is just awkward." Yeah, yeah. Like, it was a it was a steep learning curve for yeah. sure. But once once I kind of got a better handle on it, it was like, all right, I got it. Yeah. So yeah, so that that's been really sweet as well. Nice. But yeah, moving on. Moving on. All right, then that's all we got. <laughs> Mel, I am so jealous of your life. I think Master is too honestly.
Now, I was confused when I had first heard about this. I think we may have talked about it on the podcast. I, I went briefly, to, I think. Yeah, I went to try and go look back for it, but I didn't look too hard. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I, uh, I thought that Jordan Peele was directing the Candyman movie, but I was mistaken. No. He is writing, and I think he's executive producing it. I that sounds about right. Yeah, but. It is someone else directing it. Um, it's a woman. Um, her name's like Nia DaCosta or something to the effect of that. That also sounds very I'm, close. I, I might be murdering her name. Sorry. Uh, like she's going to hear this. She right. Hear this. She, <laughs> she's like, well, I can't hear you over all this money I'm about to make off this movie. Right. But yeah. So, so, so yeah. Jordan Peele has had a string of hits and um, get out us from what I hear the Twilight Zone show was really good. I haven't personally I haven't seen, it, seen but, it yet. Yeah, but from what I hear, it's pretty good. I, I have enough going on in life. It, mm. Watching things on TV, streaming services, fair it, it kind of takes like the bottom of my list. Fair enough, fair enough. I uh, So I was really interested you know, to see what he would do with this, seeing as how he's kind of not necessarily, I don't want to say reinvented you know, horror, mm-hmm. but... He has kind of breathed new life into the horror genre and made a a point of making highbrow horror movies as opposed to everything's just like, ah, some old spooky right, jokes right, right. and shit. And don't get me wrong, those elements are in his films, but that's not what the movie is about. The movie isn't just a string of jump scares where it's like, you know, no offense to people who like those movies, but like you know, Annabelle or The Nun or some mm-hmm. shit like that, where it's just a string of jump scares right, right, right. on top of, like, a thinly veiled plot. Like, where his movie's, like, there's meaning behind it and layers to it and shit. And I was like, okay, he's going to bring back Candyman, not my favorite horror villain, you know. See, money's actually. A lot, I've I've noticed from, from talking to people online mm-hmm. about this, a lot of people from the South really have an affinity for this movie on like a personal level i i think it's like something and, and it's some rite like, of passage or something down yeah and there. especially like african-american you know southern folk i noticed because i think of the subject matter of like you know he was like a slave and was killed for like supposedly like sleeping with some slave master's wife i don't know i've like only that. seen it once yeah, uh, it, T-Money it's been said a that, long time yeah, yeah t-money said that he grew up watching Candyman, and oh, see, like that sure him here. i guess <laughs> that's how he, he, he said us right yeah i guess that's how like you know ours was like jason or michael myers or sure sure stuff sure. like that, that his his was of, candy yeah, man yeah, yeah. and it i think it has to do with the superstition level yeah because mm-hmm. there is a lot of superstition in the south um, well, doesn't the the movie take place in like New Orleans or somewhere? In, yeah, in the Texas, South? I think. Okay, I'm like, I know it's somewhere yeah, down yeah, south. Yeah, I think it's in Texas. But okay. um, the like the whole element of suspense and mm. uh, voodoo and superstition and all of that is real, real prevalent down oh, in the south. Oh hell yeah! Oh it, hell it yeah! It was especially when we lived in Louisiana, but oh, um, yeah. in Texas too. When there's a lot of superstitious people down there. Oh, and yeah. so I think that might have... And, and no offense to any of us Southern Well, no, no, no. Like, I've, you know, yeah, no, I'm not no dogging them. Clearly, I'm yeah. marrying a Southern man. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. uh... It's like, I, I just know that somebody yeah, could it's take just... that little, like, blip of what you said out of context and be like, mm, you see that? They yeah, like, I got mm, I got nothing wrong. No, you know, no. everybody is... No, it, it's, it's a cultural reason. Yeah, exactly. Thing, everybody but... has got their own cultural thing, yeah. and I think it's cool that everybody has something to believe in down sure, there. Sure, sure, sure. So, like, I think it's neat. Shots fired. Fuck y'all. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I did no, not say that. No, no, no. Just kidding. But um, he's actually really excited about this, and, I mean, it looks well-written. Mm. Um. Yeah, I'm I'm interested, yeah, with what he's going to, because, you know, again, like with us and Get Out. Sure. I'm interested to see, like, what else he's going to put in it. What the what the bottom layers are going to be? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, because cause there's, like, the plot itself, but then there's, like, this kind of other layer to it that if you look for it, it's there. But if you're not really, you can still enjoy it just as a movie on right, its own right. and not be like, oh, did you notice how it was like a, a metaphor for this, say, that, and the other? That's kind of how it goes with us, though. Yeah, I yeah. watch it for just like as a movie. Sure. And then you 
take it to that second deep layer and you're like, well, look at this and that. And then, you know, Mm -hmm. I start thinking back about it and I end up watching the movie again and I'm like, holy shit. How did I miss this? And I'm always just impressed by it when, when you know, directors and writers can do stuff like that. Like, now, don't get me wrong. I mean, Jordan Peele from... I've only seen two feature films from him. They've both been good. Right. You know, I still feel that Get Out is better than Us. But... Yeah. I I I just think it's a tighter script. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think that Us is a, a weaker film. I just think that, you know... Get Out was very like this is what the movie is about, whereas Us it was kind of like okay, what's happening right now? Yeah, you know, in some yeah, parts it's like us, I'm not really us sure. Was kind of more ambiguous, whereas yeah, Get Out yeah, was yeah. kind of like, pretty straightforward. Yeah, like white people crazy go. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, they uh, I, you know, so so I I'm I'm always impressed when when writers and directors can do that, and even though he's only done the two films mm-hmm. so far, I've been really pleased with these subplots and like the, the, the deeper meanings that he's put in his movies. And I really like the main actor in this as well. Um, I'm going to fuck his name up. It's Yaya Abdul Mateen. The second, I think I'm saying that right. Okay. But especially because, which I know you probably still haven't watched it yet, but he, he's in Watchmen and he plays a, a really great role in that show. And I mean, well, spoilers, I'm, it's been out for a while. Right. He's Dr. Manhattan in the show. Right. And he, you know, I, I seen him in one other movie. He plays black Manta in Aquaman. Oh yeah, he does. Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. That's right. So, so he's on like a little come up right now. I knew he looked like familiar, familiar, right? Familiar, familiar. What have I seen him in? But because, and then he's been in some other stuff too, but because, you know, he's still kind of like a fresh face, uh-huh. like I recognize him uh-huh. because I watch Watchmen. So I've seen right, his, right. his face for like hours at right, this right, point. Right. Uh, and, and I've watched Watchmen, just not all of it. Yet. Okay. Okay. Fair, fair. And uh, so, so I'm really I- I- I happy for him because I really like him as, a- as an actor and I'm excited to see him in something else. Cause I was worried, you know, once they weren't gonna doing get a second casted. season. Yeah, of Watchmen. I was like, well, you know, is he going to get work? You know, yada, yada. It's right. Like, you know. But so far, he, he's, he's been, you know, on, on a, a nice wave of popularity mm-hmm. with his career as well. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's nice to kind of see all these people coming together, like, at their, not necessarily peak, but, like, they're really hot right now. Yeah. And, and they're all kind of coming together to do this. For a property that, to be honest, I was not excited about. I mean, I mean again, I don't have the same attachment right. to it as some other, you know, groups do. But for me, in general, like, I love me a good slasher movie. Mm-hmm. But I feel that the key to a perfect slasher movie is the slasher has to be a force of nature. Right. Don't humanize them. I don't want to hear the monologue and talk and give me their backstory about like, oh, they did this to me and, and this is revenge for that, 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 and I'm going to haunt you forever and I'm going to kill all your kids in their dreams. And like, like, I don't need all that shit. Like that <laughs> makes the killer uninteresting to me because okay. you over explain them. That's why I like what Heath Ledger and Christopher Nolan did with their version of the Joker because he he is humanized to a degree because he is a person. You sure. understand that. But because you don't really understand him. Right. And, and he's got so many levels. Right, right. And he, you know, lies about you know, his backstory and everything else. So it's like you can never really get, get a good grasp on him. And, you know, he even says, I just do things so like with michael myers and jason and shit like that it's like that's why i don't i never like freddy krueger all that yeah, much hellraiser like i don't like hellraiser um you know Candyman, chucky i he's just like i always thought he was funny because he just swore a lot and shit but you know i i for me and you know other people will, will disagree with this mm-hmm. i'm certain but for me i would rather it just be like i need to figure out how to stop and or get away from this thing that wants nothing more than to kill me. So like the final destination movies where it was just straight death. Not necessarily even that. I mean, I, I that didn't really have an explanation. It was just, well, I like the term the first two Terminator movies okay. so much because okay. of that, because yeah, yes, yeah. Arnold speaks, 
but he doesn't not really he's not like telling this whole like yes I am from the future to Sabadine right, right. to kill he you says like things to move the story along yeah you know what I'm saying like but he ain't a backstory right or or, or just like glut, gloating and shit right. you know what I'm saying where like the villains like aha I got you cornered now and pulling that Freddy shit and then he get kicked in the balls and they run off and then <laughs> wake up and he can't kill him now and it's like see if you would have just did it and quit bullshitting right. it'd be done that's why I like killers like Jason and Michael mm-hmm. Myers shit like sure. that if they can get within arm's reach of you that's your ass there ain't no oh I'm finna taunt you and and and, and tell you all the horrible right. shit I'm gonna do to your body I'm gonna be like a James Bond villain and explain my entire plot right exactly it's like nah 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 if I can reach out and touch you that's your ass that's it it's done yeah. <laughs> like all this other in between shit is just pointless yeah. yeah so I mean I don't know what they're gonna do with this it, it seems like it's gonna be some kind of possession thing I wanna say after seeing the trailer though I am kind of interested like it oh yeah no i definitely i wasn't it. interested prior mm-hmm. but now that i've seen the trailer i'm more interested and more inclined to actually enjoy this yeah mm-hmm. and i'm sure that team money will enjoy it because it's like his favorite slasher guy <laughs> i will probably sure. enjoy it just because it looks like aesthetically it'll be a good movie mm-hmm. yeah so that might be two different takes on something yeah, and, and I mean, it looks like it has, like, good production value. Like, you know, it, it doesn't look cheap or whatever. And I, I like the whole idea of the fact that you can only see him in the mirror unless, he, you know, you're the one he's killing. Like, it's just kind of like you're just kind of floating when he's, like, gutting you with the hook and right, shit. Like, right. like that, that, that's a cool visual thing. So I'm interested to see how they're going to play with this. And I just, I just, I'm just worried that the trailer gave too much of the movie away yeah there was a lot in this because i'm just like damn are y'all gonna tell me in the trailer that he is the candy man already like aren't i'm supposed to like figure this out throughout the course of the movie like that he's the killer like nah we killing we telling you he candy man like a minute into this shit <laughs> well there is supposed to be um the the guy that played the candy man originally tony mm. todd yeah oh he's gonna be in this too there is i want to say you could see him in the reflection he's when he con- walks by the yeah, car he's confirmed to be there somewhere but we didn't see him in the trailer unless he was that crazy reflection mm-hmm. so i don't know how they're gonna tie that in there it's gonna be interesting to see though yeah I, it would be I, nice I... if they kind of brought him back as the same role yeah i know i think they're gonna pull some uh because i mean he's pretty old now so i think they're gonna try to pull some like uh friday the 13th uh part whatever the new blood shit where it's like jason has possessed this motherfucker Could now be. and now he the new jason Could be because he's like oh i don't know what's happening to me and right, right, right. You, you see him being all crazy in the mirror with candy man and shit i'm like so are you becoming the candy it man? Could be. Or could be. Is it like some shit where he's working through you? Who fucking knows? I don't know. We'll have to go see it. But yeah, out. no, I, I definitely want to check this out. Um, comes out in July, June or July. One of the J June, months. I That's think. not January. <laughs> <laughs> One of the summer. It's, it comes out this summer. Right, right, right. All right, moving on. I am rumor. It is a blessed condition. Believe me, to be whispered about at street corners, to live in other people's dreams. <laughs> Hello, neighbor, <laughs> and welcome back to another edition of Mostly Movie News. I'm your host, Mostly Movie News Mike. <laughs> I like it, Mostly Movie News Mike. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, for our first story this week, um, I mentioned this a little bit before, back mm-hmm. in the uh, What You've Been Doing, but the coronavirus has postponed, I was a little hyperbolic earlier when I said canceled, GDC this year um but e3 is still pushing forward apparently um e3 2020 is scheduled to happen from june 9th through june 11th but as numerous worldwide events are canceled or postponed due to the covid19 yeah see we were close yeah covid19 aka coronavirus outbreak it would be reasonable to question whether organizers were wavering in the wake of gdc being postponed e3's organizers have stated that they still plan on having the event in june News comes from Vice's 
uh, Patrick Klepek, who received a statement from the ESA and shared it via Twitter. The statement confirms that the company is, quote, watching the situation very closely and makes it clear that things could could change. But for now, it is, quote, moving ahead full speed with E3 2020. E3 2020 planning. Yeah, having trouble getting that out there. Yeah, just a little bit. I wonder if that's going to affect Comic Con. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. I, 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 I. I mean, I don't know. I, I still don't know how I necessarily feel because the yes, the mortality rate is low, but we are seeing a little bit each day that mm-hmm. the spread is becoming wider and more right. people are becoming infected. So a low mortality rate does not necessarily mean good things. I mean, it's a good thing. Yes. If it's in a small group, sure. But you know, there's six, 7 billion people on the planet. So uh, almost eight at this point. Yeah. I'm like, you know, you do the math. What's 2% of 8 billion people is like, that's a lot. So it's like, eh, that could be a big deal. Now, not saying that that's going to happen, but things like this, I, I, kind of applaud you know the the organizers of gdc uh which is the game developers conference um you know for for taking precautions because they didn't cancel it they just postponed it and moved sure, it down sure now honestly i don't know they were just saying like a, a vaccine is still like maybe a year away mm-hmm. you know so what they're postponing it for like it's gonna be better down the road somehow like i don't know like you may like either do it this year or don't do it this year at uh, all. <laughs> but i'm like but to say we're gonna do it later in the year because magically you know the risk will be lower than maybe somehow. they're anticipating like people getting over this well like not freaking out no 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 like physically like oh, oh the oh, okay the so like they're treating it like the flu okay sure, well sure. when you have the flu you have to stay home and you can't sure. go out in public and whatever sure, sure. and then once you're over the flu then you can resume your right but not everyone is going to be right, right infected right. at the same time right. so well maybe like... they're figuring if they raise awareness about it now then the people who are infected will stay quarantined and stay home and then they'll get over it I know I've heard several people refer to it. Oh well, it's simply like the flu, so I don't want to. I don't want to sound like that. That's right. not what I. I just use it as an example. Right. I clearly this is a serious thing. Um, we've got people, you know, dying from this. So it's it's not something. No, to be no, no, and, and and we're not trying to make light of it. Right. At no, all, not but, at all. Know, we're just saying. I I was just saying like. Maybe that's what they're anticipating. Maybe. I mean, we all, we'll see. We all know that I'm good at giving people the benefit of the doubt of sure, sure. scenarios that maybe they yeah. had. And, 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 and they did say as well, you know, they're they're going to assess the situation and then sure. know, go make a decision from there. But, I mean, E3, I, I do find it kind of because they're just like, yep, everything's all good. We just going full speed ahead. But at the same time, they're kind of going with the logic that I just said of, you know, hey, there ain't gonna be no vaccine later this year so right. it's like you either do it now or don't do it at all right. so fuck it all right next story the legend james lipton died yesterday i did see that mm-hmm. yep james lipton um an actor turned academic who became an unlikely celebrity and got hundreds of master actors and hollywood luminaries to open up about their craft as the longtime host of Inside the Actor's Studio died on Monday. Uh, Lipton died of bladder cancer at his New York home. His wife, uh, Kadaki Lipton, told the New York Times and the Hollywood Reporter uh, he was 93. The, the Detroit, which I did not know, mm-hmm. uh, born Lipton began the Bravo show in 1994 that also served as a class for his students at the Actor's Studio where he was then dean. Wait. I... Go ahead. No, it's, I was just going to say we lost uh, two people this week, mm. so that's pretty crazy. Yeah, I was going to say, who was the other one again? Uh, the other guy is from Harry Potter. He played uh, Professor... I don't remember. But he he was like 71. He played one of the professors in Harry Potter. Oh, uh, I wonder. Um, uh, I know it's not the guy who played Dumbledore. No, it's... Now it's going to bug me. Um... I don't remember uh, his name. It's fine. Yeah, I don't remember his name. He's dead. No, <laughs> no, that's Damn. terrible. Damn. No. 
No, okay. Well, anyway, anyway, I, I just wanted to throw that in there. No big deal. Don't worry about it. Next story. So, Black Panther 2. Um, they will be starting production on this very soon. Uh, it is, uh, it, it's going to be filming in two different places because, uh, while Atlanta has become Marvel Studios, uh, stomping grounds in recent years, quite a few other productions have recently been filmed in the UK and Australia. Now it sounds like Black Panther 2 could end up following Shang-Chi's example by shooting down under next year. Uh, filming is reportedly going to take place in the United States as well, and Australia might make a much better double for Wakanda than Atlanta ever would. Black Panther 2 filming near the coast could also lend some weight to reports that Namor is set to appear in Ryan Coogler's follow-up. Ooh. Now, from what I've been seeing, Ryan Coogler's come out and said that, you know, he's just now getting to the point where he's working on the outline for Black Panther 2. So, I mean, you know, what major story beats and characters are going to be in it will be probably fleshed out at that point when the well, outline yeah, is finished. Sure. And then they will go in and figure out, okay, well, how are we going to integrate them into the story and make this work and make it all feel natural and real and like it's an organic, you know, development. So they've been, there's been rumors that Namor was going to be coming up in the next phase here for like, well, they should, they even said in phase uh, three, that, you know, we were going to see Namor show up at some point. Yeah. But it, 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 we've yet to get there. You know, DC did kind of beat Marvel to the punch with Aquaman. So, you know, we'll see if Namor pops his bitch ass up. But, I mean, hey. I think he'd be cool to see. But, again, he's not like an essential character for me. But that is one of the things that I like about Marvel so much is that they can take characters that I would have otherwise not gave two right. shits about. And make me care about them. Like Doctor Who? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's 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 impressive like that they've built an empire off of C-list characters. So, mm-hmm. and no offense to these characters. I'm just saying. I'm like, there ain't no Spider-Man. I'm just, you know, putting <laughs> that out there. But all right. And finally, um, She-Hulk. Now, that show is coming together and mm-hmm. it's probably going to be... It's probably more than becoming more than most likely that we will see Mark Ruffalo's Hulk show up in the show in some form or fashion when it comes out on Disney Plus. Right. Uh, uh, in the comic books, uh, Jennifer Walters becomes She Hulk after receiving a blood transfusion from her cousin Bruce Banner. It's hard to imagine the same not happening in the TV series coming to Disney Plus, but Mark Ruffalo has played coy when it comes to whether he'll have any sort of involvement. Well, during a recent appearance at C2E2 in Chicago, the Avengers Endgame star reportedly told those in attendance that he was indeed, that he has indeed had, quote, preliminary talks with Marvel Studios to join the cast of She-Hulk. His role would likely be a small, small one, but this would obviously mean getting to see what became of the Jade Giant after he used the Infinity Stones to bring back half of the universe. She-Hulk is set to begin shooting over the summer, so it shouldn't be too much longer before we learn more about what's planned for this solo adventure for the lawyer-turned-superhero. Not including Ruffalo would have been a major disappointment for comic book fans, especially when the Hulk is such an integral part of She-Hulk's creation. His role will likely be a minor one, though as Marvel will want to keep the spotlight on Bruce Banner's superpowered cousin rather than him. So what do you think about that? I'm kind of excited about that. Like me too. <laughs> yeah, like well, anytime we get to see the Hulk, I mean, right? I love love seeing the Hulk and love Mark Ruffalo, um, but just we've never had She Hulk mm-hmm. on any kind of a. Uh, she had cartoon. a cartoon. I mean, she had a cartoon. Yeah, yeah. In what the nineties? That is true. Mm-hmm. And that's fair. It's totally fair. Comics and cartoons. Totally. We've fair. never seen her in live action. That's fair. Whether it be TV show or movie. So I'm I'm really excited about this. Yeah. I like this. Now, don't get me wrong with what I'm about to say. I'm not like, oh, well, I hate the men superheroes because trust me, I like looking at them and I like sure. them all. Sure. As I, do we all. <laughs> I mean, I just I like them all just as much. Sure. But I like to see, like you said, these, you know, BC list characters coming to life and a good chunk of them are happening to be female. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Mm -hmm. that's really cool as a woman to kind of see that come through where it's not just, oh, well, comics is a man's game 
it, you know, they're kind of evening the playing field oh, yeah. a little bit. Yeah, no, and 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 I I I like She Hulk as as a character. I like her attitude. Yeah, I, I like some of the storylines that they have done with her over the years. I'm just really interested to see how they're going to incorporate him into this, especially after what happened with him at by the end of Endgame. I mean, because I'm, I'm like, is he still? Because I would assume. You know his arm is still fucked. You right. know, like like that that little take my strong hand arm he got now. Like that's he he looking <laughs> rough out here. So right. it's like he's just got just some dangling meat all hanging off his shoulder. Like I don't even think he can use that damn arm. No I was say maybe Pepper can make him like a robotic arm. Oh, that'd be sweet. Give so him like a like a, a Bucky a, arm, a Tony Stark. Arm. Oh yeah, or Bucky or some shit. Yeah, hell yeah, shit. Like man, let me. No, nah, like he he need to go holler at the child and get the good shit. Fuck all that. That's true. All that Stark tech. I need that vibranium. Fuck That's the bullshit. True. <laughs> he said, "Shit, if I had a vibranium uh, glove, I probably wouldn't have fucked my arm up right, like this shit. Right, Fucking right. around with Tony shit." Uh, but, but I mean, I'm excited to see where it's yeah, going to take us. Yeah. And 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 at the same time as well too, you know it. Like, these are the ways that we're going to still be able to see our OG Avengers. Oh, yeah. You know, pop up and little cameos and stuff here yep. and there. Because if we do see a cameo of Iron Man in Black Widow, like, that'll, th- this is going to be the only way we're going to ever see Cap again. Right. And, you know, Tony again and, you know, right. Hulk again. So, the, Thor, the he, he's still out there getting his money. He like, shit, I'll, I'll keep doing this shit till I'm 100. I don't give a Thor, fuck. Thor, Guardians, you know, <laughs> yeah, they're... Said, look, we good. <laughs> they're they're said, banking. I, he said, I will re-up this contract for life. Fuck the bullshit, because I ain't got shit else. He's like, did you see Men in Black too? Or the new Men in Black? Me neither. <laughs> yeah, that was rough. Shit. Like, we need some money. All right. But thank you for joining us for another edition of Mostly Movie News. Goodbye. Sony is skipping E3 for the second year in a row. You're damn right. They're not gonna let a little pandemic get in their way, not if they want an E3 2021, at least. that time again for America's number one show, Dumb Shit of the Week. That's right. Dumb Shit of the Week is the show where DJ Melly Mel finds dumb shit and we talk about it. What's your submission on the show? Find us on Twitter at GiantLeads and number four geeks, or you can email us at officialoglfg at gmail.com. Here's your host, DJ Melly Mel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Um, so the internet has been good and bad and... Uh-oh. In the bad, we have, you know, things like internet challenges and crazy conspiracy theories. And sure. this, today's dumb shit is not any different. Um, the new internet challenge is called the Skip Challenge. Okay. A.K.A. the Pass Out Game. 
The challenge requires the players, in quotes, um, to press against a person's chest as hard as they can until their friend passes out. Uh, multiple videos have uh, surfaced up on TikTok and Facebook, and there was one on Instagram of teenage boys and girls, um, mostly boys, uh, th- posting, you know, 25, 30 second videos, and it's making its rounds. Clearly, I don't need to tell you that this is a bad idea. Because... No, co- no, clearly you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would think that I don't have to co- uh, say that this you, is a bad you, you idea, but uh, apparently I have to. to. But clearly. Um, you take your hands, like you have your friends stand up against a wall, and you take your hands and lay them flat on their pectoral muscles. And you push as hard as you can, like with the pal- the ball of your your the heel of your hand here. Okay. And you push into their chest, like where their lungs are. And then they pass out. So So the goal what, is to get your friend to pass out. Oh, uh, so what I don't still don't get the <clears throat> name. It it's called the what did I say? It was skip called the game? skip challenge. Or skip challenge. Yeah, well, skip like, challenge aka you, the pass out game. You 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 skip in life if you die. Like you're like, making their heart skip because you're pass you're making them pass out. Yeah, you're also killing brain cells. Right, right, that right. Shit too, but I was um, like, all right, whatever. Doctors have strongly advised against this because <sighs> it could lead to seizures, brain damage, and even death. You know what? I'm so <laughs> over this kind of shit. <laughs> Me too. I'm, I'm to the point. You know what? Just die. Fuck <laughs> We didn't have stupid shit like this growing just up. Just die. Or just at least fucking kill if them, we like... did. Just I was pushing. not a part of it. Push until they fucking eyes pop out their head. Fuck them. Like, I don't... Ugh, I'm so over this. So, place. in case you don't know, pressing on your chest will decrease your oxygen yeah. supply yeah. to your brain. Um, It causes unconsciousness, seizures. Prolonged oxi- oxygen deficiency will lead to brain damage mm-hmm. and could even kill you. Yep. I was going to say irreversible brain Irreversible, damage. yeah. There, it's like, not like, we like... just talking about, oh, you can't remember some shit you did five no, years ago. No, it's we like, like vegetable status. Drool coming out your mouth. Right. Uh, you want life support. Like, you can't Living in yourself. a bed. Yeah, you piss in a catheter. Like, no. Uh, you know, besides all of that. Uh, broken ribs, mm-hmm. uh, bruising on yeah, the I was lungs. Say, yeah, I'm like, you can break all that shit in there. You like, can break ribs doing CPR, which is something that saves somebody's life. Mm-hmm. I was like, especially these and that's, weak ass, bird chest ass teenagers. <laughs> shit. I'm like, y'all motherfuckers go fucking. I would say, th- I mean, that's, puncture a lung with a rib. <laughs> that's a very common thing is to break ribs when you're doing CPR. Mm-hmm. So th- if you're pushing on somebody's chest, you're gonna break ribs, puncture organs. Um, bruise your bruise lungs. your lungs. Have you ever had a bruise on your lungs? That shit stays with you forever. Like not forever, literally, but right, I mean, shit, like six months. Like yeah, like six months. You can stay bruised on the inside. Jesus. Yeah. No. no, it, no go ahead. Just kill him. Fuck him. This started in <laughs> Indonesia and it has made its way to the U.S. Said, fuck it. Fuck him. <laughs> I like I said. I used to feel bad and shit and, and, and try to be funny about it and i'm like you know what now nah <laughs> one, like, y'all, y'all deserve i'll this say shit. one of the videos that was posted the boy is pressed against the wall right mm-hmm. dude passes out and he's still he, they still are pressing yeah. him up against yeah. the wall hours 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 it said one of the videos that was uploaded somewhere the boy was pressed against the wall and was still unconscious several hours after he had passed out. Oh, okay, okay. They no, were no, pressing like, him for they hours. Had, they had pressed against him until they could no longer hold him up, uh-huh. let him fall, and then several hours later he was still unconscious. Jesus Christ. I was like, why? Why? What is the point of this? I mean, you know what? Like, I... You could not pay me. For some, if you come up to me and you're like, hey, Mel, we got this new game we're going to play. I'm going to push on your chest until you pass out. No, thank you. I know. And, 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 and don't, don't get me wrong. I, we are not so old and out of touch to the point where we don't understand that kids do silly shit. I totally have done all kinds of dumb ass shit. But, yeah, but I it never was did always, anything. but it was always like in the spirit of. Like I'm getting some kind of pleasure out right. of it. Right, I never like, did like, it like, like, something like, where like I hurt I, myself. If I drink underage 
or, you know, did drugs or went to a party or did something that was dangerous. It's because I thought it was fun at that time. Right. I don't, and maybe, maybe this is me being old and out of a touch, but I don't see where the, this will be fun part is right, right. setting yourself on fire right. or, you know, eating Tide Pods I'm or 100% with snorting you. condoms. And I'm younger than you. About on here. Like, I'm uh, younger than you. Yeah. Not by much, but yeah. like, I know. I, know. I would never be like, hey, this is going to be fun. I'm with you. Sure. We're going to go party. All right. We're going to drink underage. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to experiment sexually. All right. Fine. Sure. But I'm not going to light myself on fire. Yeah. That just screams to me something that's really stupid and shouldn't be done. And, and especially with something like this too, like like with, with other silly ass challenges, like with Burr Box challenges, stuff like that, those are equally as dumb. But I mean, it doesn't require... What a challenge like this requires and, 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 and other challenges like the fire challenge requires mm -hmm. where it's like it takes time to burn to get through the your result arm. Oh, yeah. of what you want. Right. Like, you know, when, when you're sitting there and you're getting undressed and you're pouring the, the gasoline or kerosene or whatever on yourself, there does come a point in that where you can stop and be like, okay, this is stupid. Right. You know, with... With, with, like, the Burger Box Challenge and, and dumb ones, like, they just put on blindfold and just do some silly shit, you know, like, yeah, you know, or, or getting out and ghost ride, walking next to your car and all that silly shit on the road. These can be, like, instant, like, gratification ones. Stuff like this where it's, like, I have to stand there and push you until you pass out. Like, there is about 30 moments in between you passing out and us starting to do this where you could be, like, this is stupid. We should right. stop doing this. Like it, me, and who as, does it get pleasure for? Does right, it get right. pleasure for the person who's passing out, or does it get pleasure for the person who's standing there? Yes, it's funny to see somebody pass out. Yes, we've all been to some party or event or something, and somebody was drunk or something and passed out or whatever. The fuck, like sure, it happens all the time. I get it, but not like intentionally. This, though. Yeah, it's like you know, like. I don't know, man. Like, maybe people do sit around and just put each other in headlocks so they pass out. Who fucking knows? Like, the, I, I know. mean, they do. <laughs> they really do. And I've seen that. But I'm, too, I'm too elite for this shit, apparently. <laughs> I, I, I guess. I don't. Yeah. I'm going back to the whole, I didn't think about shit like this when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. um, certainly not thinking about it now that I'm an adult. Sure. And I pray to God that my kids don't find this amusing <laughs> like shit yeah, like this you know yeah, and yeah. i mean i kind of i kind of blame like the jackass era yeah you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna second that hell yeah i mean what is the other one the ones on uh mtv ridiculousness yeah and jack yeah. well jackass kind of started it yeah if you think about it when did jackass come out late 90s right yeah. when mm, are right. all these yeah, kids being yeah. All these kids that are doing all this shit, mm -hmm. their parents are a little bit older than us or, mm -hmm. you know, about our age or whatever. And I'm sure that they let their kids watch Johnny Knoxville and Steve-O burn each other with some firecrackers and shit. At some point or another. As, sure yeah, at one point or yet. another. Uh -huh. So now we have this entire generation of, like, jackass-raised kids, no puns intended. Like the ones that grew up watching the the jackass videos yeah. and stuff, yeah. and oh yeah, it's it's fun to hurt yourself, and now we're stuck in this repetitive cycle of all these internet challenges where people are hurting themselves. At least with the jackass dudes, though, I can respect them because they was making money off the shit. That's true, and they were you know they were adults, and well, I mean, they clearly put on there. Any of that shit, they they actually like made a career out of this shit right. and made it profitable. All these other motherfuckers, it's like, they think they getting internet famous, but it's like, where is the money coming from? Right, there Cause, is none. Because cause, cause, cause ain't nobody finna endorse your ass for setting yourself up. No. <laughs> no one's gonna endorse you because you passed out for, like, six hours after you did the skip challenge. Like, I, So, again, it's like, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, like, is it just the, are we just doing it for the likes, for real? Like, I know that's a, a meme and a joke and shit, but it's like, I is think, that for I real? I think it's true, like, though. Like, are we really just that, like, hard up for attention? God damn. I, I think we are to a point where the next, the eight, 
15 to 18 year old generation is just so hard up for attention that but i don't even think it's even just them i, though, I don't think so because there Cause, are cause some stupid there, adults there, there's too. some like some older people i you think know, we're and, just, even in my age group yeah. that does this shit to try and get clout with the younger kids right. and it's just like you're even worse because you really know better right you're enabling them I'm, I'm like right you're enabling them and you know better and you're doing it because you're trying to appeal to them not because you are just dumb and think this is a good idea too. right oh my god yep um so yeah i think we've hit that point well we've been at that point for a while but we've definitely hit a peak in this kind of I'm going to hurt myself to get attention and be funny kind of thing. Yeah, that's fair. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. That's fair. <laughs> but um, I, I guess all I can say this week is don't press on the chest of anybody. You know, you could kill them. That's another thing is a lot of these people aren't thinking about, oh, hey, I could kill you. Mm-hmm. And then what if I push on your chest till you pass out and you don't wake up? exactly then that's on me and i gotta live with my life knowing that i killed my best friend Mm -hmm. so like you know i don't really or i made my best friend a vegetable right yeah my best friend will never do anything ever again other than pee on themselves because they're in a bed Mm -hmm. but uh i had 15 seconds of fun that'd be great no fuck that so um this just kind of come to me like i most dumb shits i don't really know my rhyme or reason i don't really think i have a pattern I, it's just drawn to me the universe knows that this is my my spiel so um all i can say is stay smart kids don't be pushing on people's chests and uh don't do the skip challenge uh if you want to be a part of the dumb shit process i'm always taking in considerations you can at me on twitter at froggy beaver or you can send it to the show uh one giant leap the number four geeks you can also email it to us at official oglfg at gmail.com and yeah the moral story stay smart kids so like can we make a pact to have no more dumb shit that involves internet challenges at least until summer there's not much to do when all I can is thinking about you, not doing well, don't know where you are, cause you're not here, it's been way too long. I always feel like somebody's <laughs> watching me. <laughs> so, we uh, saw The Invisible Man. We did. The Now, it, it's it's amazing how far we've come because remember this started out as part of the dark universe like this was not what we just watched we're not like right just now but (laughs) what what we saw was not where this was originally going really yeah well this was going to be a part of their whole like Frankenstein Avengers, like literally Frankenstein Avengers team, like they were going to have the Wolfman and Dracula and Frankenstein and the Invisible Man. I'm pretty sure Johnny Depp was going to be the Invisible Man, actually, uh, initially. He's been considered for a lot of shit yeah, lately. Yeah, so that, yeah. You, you saw that article I <laughs> sent you, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so it's it's interesting to me how far this has come because, you know, uh Blumhouse came in and said, like, look, look, give us this shit. Like, y'all don't know what y'all doing with this. Like, y'all keep trying to do some Marvel shit with this. And it's like the other comic book studio, DC can't even get their shit together to do some Marvel shit. So, you know, you damn well ain't finna do this shit with the goddamn movie monsters. Like, right. come on now. Like, like, movie like, monsters, ha- like, in that sense, have not been relevant since no. like the 50s hell no no hell you know. no and i mean don't get me wrong you got your mainstays. May- maybe the 80s yeah well, well you got your mainstays like you know every few years or so and they always gonna pump out a new frankenstein or dracula movie mm-hmm. like it's almost guaranteed at least one every five years you will see a frankenstein and or dracula right right at some right point. but with this it they took this in a much, much, much different direction than what this initially started out as. I'm actually really glad that they did. It, it was very interesting to see what they decided to do. So, just to kind of give you um, a real quick, if you haven't listened to one of these before, 
we normally would do uh, non-spoilers in the front, spoilers at the back. Um, I think we can talk about it without spoiling it, though. It just came out over the weekend, so, you know, I, I want to give you guys the opportunity to go see it. But, you know, if if there is something that is just really itching at me to talk about, at the very, very end, we'll do spoilers. But for the most part, I think you're safe. You're good to go. But we will give our reviews at the end, and yeah. But. Uh, just to give you the plot of this. So our heroine, mm-hmm. uh, she is, which I totally blanked on her name. I had it pulled up too and I lost it. <laughs> um, but she, she is in a relationship and she's in an abusive relationship with a very wealthy guy who is the CEO of this optics company that mm-hmm. does vague tech stuff because they never really go into it not really no but she decides to run away from him one day and he then ends up killing himself what we're led to believe and she is promised five million dollars yes um over the course of however long it takes she gets like ten thousand dollars a month or something like that a uh, hundred thousand dollars, or no, ten thousand dollars every month in installments, yeah. providing that she doesn't yeah, commit she doesn't a crime, commit, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. She she's not she's not convicted of any crime, or and or she is not found to be uh, mentally um, incompetent. Incompetent. That's not given to us right away. No, no, no. But I mean that that's in the trailer though, right? Uh and so he then we come to find out is not dead but has found a way to turn himself invisible and is now using this power to stalk and harass her and try and destroy her life and amongst other things yeah and then the story ensues from there one of the most interesting things i i found about this was that this went to the movie is smart and dumb at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like it goes places where I was like, this is really intriguing. Like I, I, I like what they're doing here as far as like developing characters, motivations for why they're doing certain things and giving us reasons for why they're not doing certain things. I, I thought that it was very intelligent in that way, but then there in other ways, there are like obvious things where it's like, why would you not do that or say this right now? Like, okay, so so for example, um, there's a scene where he has convinced her sister that she sent her an email saying how she hates her and she doesn't want to see her anymore mm-hmm. and she doesn't need her in her life and she's you know, holding her down and it should have been her that died instead of one of the other relatives or something or other. And, and she believes it and she tries to tell her like, Oh, it wasn't me. It was him. Now we, the audience know that he's not dead and he's invisible and all that shit. She at this point believes it as well. Right. She can't prove it just yet, but she believes that it's happening. And, (laughs) and with, Everybody else thinks that he is legitimately dead. Right. But the problem is, is that she doesn't actually need to tell her that it was him. She could have easily just said, I've been hacked. Right. You know, that wasn't me. I didn't do that. Like, I wouldn't send. She called her sister to come save her from him at Mm -hmm. the beginning of the movie. Why would she then turn around and be like, oh, I hate your fucking guts. You know, you a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, she could have easily had, if they would have just talked, but because the movie needs to keep pushing the plot forward, characters don't have these vital conversations with each other that need to happen. Like, 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 I mean, honestly. I'll say there was a key part leading after Mm -hmm. the issue with the sister and T Bud and or T Bud, T Money and I were uh, looking at it, and we're like, clearly there's a, a situation here that could have been avoided. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, especially with as advanced technology as what we have going on today, mm-hmm. and yep. we're we're talking about invisible suits here. Yep. Um. Yeah, because 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 that that's one of the things too is like it's not like 
it was in like the 1940s or 50s uh invisible man where like it's a potion or something or right. even a hollow man right you know the more recent one with uh kevin, uh, kevin bacon. bacon you know where it was some kind of chemicals and potion mm-hmm. and shit that he ingested in this it's like some like it's a suit i mean you know it, it it's damn near some like Tony Stark like level you know like Iron Man kind of shit they got going on which which was one of the things I appreciated about it it was smart right. in that way because I mean no this technology not to this level does not exist yet but there are people who are at this very moment trying to make this very kind of shit a reality so right. it's not that far fetched so I, I did like that but <laughs> What I just thought was silly about it was, for the most part, I liked the characters in the movie. I like our main character. Mm-hmm. I liked her sister. Yeah. I, I like the, the cop that she goes off to live with and his daughter. I really like them in, in like, the dad the and daughter. The dynamic. Like, the dynamic yep. between them. I thought, and then in the three of them together, I thought I had a good yeah. relationship. Like, I, I enjoyed that stuff. But it's some of the choices that they give them to do where I'm just like, okay, there, she is convinced at this point that she knows that he is invisible and he's alive. Right. And no one else believes her. The movie does a good job of building up tension because she goes through this whole thing of like setting booby traps for him and trying to like figure out where he is mm-hmm. in the house and all this other kind of stuff. And is doing this good job of like building up tension because you know he's there and we're right. dreading the moment he's going to show up, but we never really you know, know where he's going to come from right, right, and how right. he's going to affect her. And then we find out that this silly son of a bitch has his phone in the attic on vibrate. Yeah, that would never happen. I'm like, okay, for one, again, and again, I can hear Stork like, let it go. I can't. It, it starts to raise questions. Has he just been living in that house in the attic this entire time? Yeah. It's like, where does he go to the bathroom? When does he eat? What does he do? And it's like, and when she's home alone, because he, he fucked her, her job prospects, so she can't go nowhere. You know, she doesn't have a job to go to. Right. She just stays at the house all the time. It's like, what does he just stand in a corner of the room and shit? Because when he's sitting somewhere, you can see the depressions in the chairs and the sure. couch. So it's hard for him to do that. I mean, he still does make noise when he, you know, bumps into shit and things like that. So it's like. He's not invisible and he's muted as well. So there was a lot of scenes in the movie where I was like, are you just standing in the corner of the room for like hours That's right now? That's kind of what I got. <laughs> like he, he would just hang out in the house. Yeah. Um, especially. And that's what was so funny about Because he's like, you have like literally the power of a god to be invisible. Right. People can and will kill for that. And you are wasting it stalking it. I mean, you could have sold this shit to the military. You could have became a super villain. Rob some banks. Right. Well, he's already rich. So I guess he don't really care about that shit. Right. But it's like, you were willing to fake your own death, throw your life away, because now you can never go out in public because people think you're dead, you know, and all this shit. It's like, it's like you have to hide. And because people think you're dead, you have to basically stay in that suit all the time. And it's like, and you choose to sacrifice all that just to stalk her it's like i get it crazy people gonna be crazy right but you would think with that much money power and influence and power superpowers right right you know it's kind of funny because our main character even brings this up like she's sitting in a corner surrounded by coffee grounds and she's like like, why me (laughs) Like why? Why you can go anyone in the world, and they try to explain. Yeah, they try it later, to, but but I mean, it's 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 kind of. If hollow. you if you try to go into like the workings of somebody who is a, a crazy psychopath, who is so controlling that they would go to these great lengths just yeah, to fuck I mean, with somebody. Great lengths, like literally invented a new technology to stalk you with. Like it's. It's a weird process. It transfers over more than just, you know, superficial, oh, it's cool for a movie. Sure. Like, there really are crazy people who do shit like this. Maybe not to this extreme. Yeah, no, no. But this I mean, is definitely played up because it's a movie, for if sure. You, yeah. If you try to get into the mind of somebody like that, they're, 
there's no telling what they'll do. Yeah, yeah. And 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 they're clearly not thinking rationally and stuff like that. Right. So it's like there is no understanding right. why they would do something like that. So right. I mean so th- fair point. I'll give you that fair point. What did you think about his brother? <sighs> I know, right? It's like every time he was on the screen, I was like, I feel dirty. Right. Just looking at you. Right. He made me just feel gross. And, and I feel bad greasy. for the actor because I'm sure he's probably a great guy. I'm he's sure. He's probably real nice and all that shit. But every time he didn't have to open his mouth when they just cut to him a reaction shot of him just making a face. I was like, ugh. Yeah. And I think that the two brothers together collectively made me just want to cringe. Mm. And I'm pretty sure I went and showered afterwards because it was it was just... That was one of the things that I thought was interesting about it is that we don't actually spend a lot of time with the main villain. You no, know? And like, not like, in like, a visible state. Yeah, I'm like, you know, he he spends a lot of time of the of the majority of the movie invisible, and you don't hear him talk all that much. Mm-mm. I mean, he fucks with her every now and then, like he you know has a thing, you know, he's surprised, like you know, he does that a lot mm-hmm. in the movie, but and that's like a reoccurring thing throughout it too. But, but like, he doesn't really monologue and do no. all this. Not until kind of towards the end. Right. One of the things that I liked about this movie was the fact that it does a good job of taking you through the story with our main character. And we know as an audience, I mean, it's called The Invisible Man. It's right. Like, it's like, you know, let's cut the shit. Because at the very beginning, they do spend a, the better half of the first act kind of like, what, well, is he dead? Is, is he really invisible? Is this happening? And it's like, yes, we know it's happening. <laughs> I've seen the tra- It's called The Invisible Man. What are we doing here, right. guys? Like, come on. I get it. They're, they have to do that for the characters in the movie. But as an audience member, there does come a point where it's just like, man, okay, we've been doing 20 minutes of this shit. Right. Like, get over it. I'm like, he's there. Accept it. Go. We're, move the story along. Right. But there was this thing that, that I thought was interesting that even though we, the audience, know that he is alive and he is invisible and he is doing this to her. It does a really good job of starting to make you even start to second guess or just feel how just helpless she feels after a while. Because it's like he does things, he does some shit, and if you've seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about. And when you see it, you know what I'm talking about. He does something in a restaurant where it's just like, damn, man, like there is literally... No way to explain that away. You can't be like, oh, you know, you don't understand. There's an invisible person and they just said the other. It's like, nah, man. Like, it's it's over, man. Like, there is literally nothing you can say to anybody that's going to make them be like, I believe her. Like, nah, man. See, <laughs> I know what scene you're talking about. Uh-huh. And that's the scene where T-Money and I were like, look back at the camera. But who? But who's to say there's a camera in the restaurant? Though? It that yeah. does not necessarily mean anything. That it was, that was a high end restaurant. Sure, sure. And high end restaurants have high end money, which means they have cameras. That that is that is true. McDonald's is true. has cameras. That is true. But but now you're kind of sounding like me though, because now it, it's got to be the thing of it's like yes, true. That would be the logical answer. But then even seeing the footage of. You would never see him. You would just see shit floating. Right. So it's like. Clearly she can't make shit float. They would be more likely to believe this bitch has telekinesis than that <laughs> is somebody invisible <laughs> doing this shit. I guess. As. I don't know. Maybe it's just me being over logical. But no. But, but. That was my first thought. Because the, the. Just kind of. Sure, sure. Yeah. But. No. But. I'm going to cut that bit. Um, but. I figured. But. Um, but. There's. Just things where it's just like you know that what's happening to her is real, but it's so defeating because it's like no one is gonna believe that right. shit. Yeah. No one is gonna be like, oh yeah. I'm like, you could throw whatever evidence you wanted to at them. Their heads would explode if they had to accept the fact that there was an invisible dude running around here stalking somebody right. and shit. So it's like it it's it, it's the way the movie sets itself up to it doesn't hide the ball for too long, but at the same time, you still start to second guess your own sanity after a while, or at least 
understand how bad this looks for her. I don't know. I guess because there's like multiple things. Like yeah, there are a lot he, of things. He starts that... like slapping the shit out of people, and it's just them and uh, her and somebody else in the room, and they're like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" And just like, "I didn't, I didn't do that." How do you explain? Like you can't be like an invisible person came in here and slapped you in the ass and ran out the room. Like no <laughs> man, like you can't. Like you just fucked. It's like it, it is shit like that where it, it just keeps building and it it it. it starts to make a case to the other characters like this bitch is crazy like everybody's like man she she just tripping and she talking about invisible people talking to her and harassing her and and i was in a room with her mm-hmm. yesterday and she punched me in the neck and shit and this, yeah <laughs> like like it looks bad and and i think that they did a good job of making you understand like how bad this looks for her right, and how right. just honestly hopeless it started to get after a while Cause I was like, fuck man. Like, I don't know. How do you beat him, man? Like, how do you win now? It kind of reminded me of, do you remember the movie from like the late nineties called enough? Oh yeah. Jennifer Lopez. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And then fast forward to hollow man with Kevin Bacon. Mm-hmm. If you got those two movies and you put them together, you would have the invisible man 2020. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they do spend a lot of time talking about the effects of, of domestic violence right and 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 not just being physically abusive but mentally abusive mm-hmm. to somebody you know the 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 power struggles in relationships mm-hmm. when somebody is like the sole breadwinner and and have you kind of come off and live with them and kind of cut you off from the rest of your friends and family right. and how after a while once they do start to encroach upon you and and put their boot on your neck you realize that you don't have anybody. Right. Like, all your friends are gone. Your family is gone. Mm-hmm. You know, that's kind of why I kind of gave some credence to the whole sisters and the email thing. Because they kind of had drifted apart because he had kind of wedged between them. And, you know, that's a really bad spot to be in anyways. As somebody who's been in that position, I can... <sighs> It's weird, because as somebody who's been in that position, I can, A, see how she got to that point. Right. And, B, I can also see how her friends and family would turn on her just as bad, like, as quick as they did. And, you know, like, the deal with her sister. I can see where her sister would have reservations about, you know, doing any kind of thing to help her or you know not believing her if she flies off the handle because somebody who's made excuses and stuff like that it is just not the uh easiest thing to get through so i mean maybe that's why i never saw her as you know that crazy like i never thought she was crazy because i just knew like what somebody would go through that kind you know that kind of control and stuff when she starts going into detail, like, about the things that he did, none of that surprised me. No. So, like, no. all the things that he did to her through, um, like, their course of their relationship and escalating to this point in time, none of that surprised me. Not a, a single bit. No. And I, I was I was really that, – that was one of the things that I, I liked about the movie, too, is that it wasn't just like, oh, you know, he's crazy that they made – him get to her on levels that was just like it would make your skin crawl like yeah. the kind of shit that he would do beyond you know um just making her look bad but physically to her mentally to mm-hmm. her emotionally to her yep. it was just like so many levels of manipulation going mm-hmm. down and 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 that's one of the things that I think were the shining spots of the movie like it oh, yeah. it did a good job yeah, of building yeah. tension it definitely brought you if you've never been in that kind of a situation, mm-hmm. it made you feel like you knew what that person was going through. Right. And if you have been in that kind of situation, you still knew what that person was going through. Right, right. Because they made it, like, spot on. Mm-hmm. So I definitely think that that aspect was really, really well written, really well acted out. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> it, it was just really well executed. And 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 as well too, I I don't want to, um, you know, 
pretend either that it was a, a perfect movie because I, I praise a lot of the things about it. There's not a ton of jump scares. One of the things I, I guess I would put on my negative list is I didn't care for the special effects. No, like, like, like they, there's there's yeah, parts where I was like, yeah, more. y'all could have spent a little bit more money on the special effects. Like, I mean, he, he's invisible the majority of the damn movie. It's like the few times I do see him, I needed to look good. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So that 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 was a little bit frustrating because I'm just like, man, like y'all didn't have to spend that much money on special effects in this. Like, come on, like, right? Where where did the budget go? But that's you know what Blumhouse does. They keep the budget low, so then that way. You know, they get bigger profits when, when, you know, people go see it. So I get it. That's a business model. But at the same time, I don't understand why the the the, the movie, because th- this was um, directed by uh, Lee Wynell. Yeah. And um, I'm pretty sure the same person that did... Um, uh, our Venom movie that should have been Venom. Um, uh, prototype. Yes. And, um, or I'm sorry, not pro- Upgrade. Upgrade. With, uh... Um, a poor man's Tom Hardy. Um, <laughs> Logan Marshall Green. Yes. And, uh, you know, and, and that was a really good movie. And one of the, the, the moment that I knew that it was him that had did this was in the scenes in the trailer where he has the security guard shoot himself in the leg. Mm-hmm. Cause like the way, like he like breaks his hand and then turns the gun into like inwards into his own knee and shoots his kneecap out. Like the way the camera follows his hand and it moves around. I was like, that reminded me of like some of the fight scenes and upgrade. Yeah. Cause like yeah, yeah, when the did. guy, he like hits the floor and he hits himself back up and yep. the camera like goes up with him, like stuff like that. And I was like, Oh, okay. This is that same person. One of the things that, I, I feel like didn't really fit in the movie because of how it had been up until that point. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it, but I think it sh- should have been in a different movie was there's a, basically a daredevil hallway fight scene. Yes. With the security guards and stuff. And it's towards the tail end of the third act and it's cool to watch, but at the same time, it's like, where did this come from? Like, right, right. Where was this the rest of the movie? Right, right. It's like one or two guards that he he does like that. Sure, but this shit goes on for a while. Like, it turns into like an action movie for a good like ten minutes, and I'm just like, did we forget that this is supposed to be about some crazy stalker <laughs> shit? Like, because I mean, the whole movie just stops, and it's like, okay, now we finna show this cool ass fight in this hallway right. and shit. And, Again, it was fine. I enjoyed it. It was one of the highlights of the movie, but it just felt out of place as compared to everything else that we had done up until that point. Oh, absolutely. Because for the most part, it, the movie's just building dread, and then you just have small moments of, holy shit, you know, like somebody gets fucked up or something happens, and then, you know, we're back to just, oh, dread again. Right. With this, it was just a prolonged, like, just money shot after money shot. Everything was cool, but I I, I felt like the movie shifted gears so hard by the end mm-hmm. that once it, that scene's over and we get back to the oldest oh, dread and oh where is she gonna find it him almost, where is he hiding almost it could have been right. i was gonna say we almost could have done without that scene yeah so, I, I appreciated that it was in there because it was cool but i agree if, if they took it out it would have changed literally nothing, nothing about the movie. exactly like it, it was that was the one thing in the movie where it had nothing to do with the plot at all and it right. was just we just want to do some cool shit and i was like i appreciate that as a moviegoer but at the same time you know, don't throw you, it in the middle, right? You can't then go back to like plotty, like oh, you know, we we finna build tension again. Right, and it's right. like, yeah, no, because you just had fucking uh, martial arts fight in the hallway like five minutes ago. Like you can't go back to <laughs> invisible this. guy on wires, right? Going Jackie much, Chan doing some, style. Doing some tiger, hidden dragon shit, and I'm like, okay, now look, right again, all cool, but wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. All in all, I I think that this was. I was worried that this was going to victimize women too much or do the opposite and try and like empower women to the point where it would maybe turn some segments of the audience away. But I think it did a good job of making her the victim in the beginning, but then empowering her to the point where she is the, the, the greater adversary. By sure. The end. Sure. 
like I, I respected the movie for that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it she didn't go all crazy and sure, sure. I mean, she played it out very nicely, mm-hmm. and I like the way that they they kind of ended things. Oh yeah, no, for sure, uh, for sure. Right before the final credits, that mm-hmm. that like last ten minutes, fifteen. Oh yeah, minutes. oh yeah. I I think besides the hallway fight, mm-hmm. which is out of place, and I agree. Mm-hmm. I think that the last. 10 15 minutes is probably the best of part of the whole movie yeah yeah um i mean there are some parts where I, I, it's very satisfying yes the, the way the yes the there are some parts that are very like capturing and satisfying mm-hmm. like you said and you know comparatively to the hallway scene or you know one of the other little more drawn out scenes from the beginning i re- i really like i just i like the way that they Gave her power, but not, like, absolute power. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. And I I think that it was ended nicely. Ending to a good movie is, or, you know, ending to any movie is key. Yeah, yeah, and it's not easy to do. And and, and I, you know, and, and I've expressed it, you know, throughout this. I totally understand some people's misgivings with the movie. You know, I, I've heard some people say that they really didn't like it. But, I mean, I... I didn't know what to expect, and my expectations that I did have were so low, you know, coming, you know, off of The Mummy, (laughs) where I was just like, I know it's a Blumhouse movie, so, you know, don't let that Dark Universe baggage come in with it, but at the same time, I'm like, man, y'all fuck, y'all screwed the pooch so hard with the Dark Universe that it's going to take a few movies to build up some goodwill with me right? before I'm like, okay, I'll I'll get on board with this, but... If this is what the future, because now, look, don't get me wrong. I don't want every one of these universal monsters to turn into fucking stalkers and shit. I don't want Dracula as a bat in the middle of <laughs> this bitch's fucking ceiling staring at her sleep and shit. I don't want the wolf man and shit in the tree watching some bitch sleep. Like, I no, we're not doing this with every character. But if this is the kind of approach that Blumhouse is going to have to the Dark Universe, because they... Universal was basically like, here, to take it. Just please right. do do something with it because we already fucking it up. <laughs> and um and, and so you know Blumhouse, you know he came in, he was like, I got you, fam, I got you. And and they're they're taking it from a different approach. So if this is how they're gonna go after the other movies, I'm really excited to see how they continue the Dark Universe from here going forward. Sure, because I mean they they don't straight up plant the seeds for a sequel or like an Avengers type. No. team up thing but they do leave enough breadcrumbs there to where it's like hey if this does do well maybe we'll do another one you know so we'll we'll see um but with all that being said we're gonna go ahead and give our ratings um now if you have not sat through one of these before um we have a five-tier rating system yes and it goes as follows really fucking liked it liked it meh hated it and really fucking hated it so DJ Melly Mel for The Invisible Man. What would you rate this? I liked it. Okay. Good. I liked it. Um, well, I'm going to say I'm good. Like, I was going to, like, I'm holding a gun over here. Like, uh-huh. You better like yep, this You shit. better like it. Right. Yeah. No. No, I did. I liked it. It wasn't, you know, the most perfect movie ever. Oh, no, no. Uh, it wasn't Avengers. No. But I'm, I'm pretty much with you on the ways that they did things. I like the direction that they went. I like that. You know, the acting was good. Um, the special effects could have used a little more. Yeah, some but, polish, yeah. I mean, they weren't terrible. We're not looking yeah. at a 1940s, you know, blob man or anything like right, that. Right. So. Like, 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 it never took me out of the movie. Right, right. But I did notice. Like, I was like, eh, yeah, I could have spent a little bit more money. Right. On this. So, yeah, I liked it. What okay. about you, Mike? I'm going to go liked it as well. I, I, again, it could be getting a little bit of a boost because my expectations were low to begin with. Yeah, I kind of, I didn't really have. I mean, I mean, the trailer looked like, okay, this could be interesting what they're doing. Right, but But not much more than that. I still was like, I need to see proof of concept. Sure. I need to see the finished product because it, I'm, I don't know, like y'all, y'all tripped over y'all own feet starting a dark universe, so. I'm like, eh, I still don't know. But again, it's it's a solid story. Um, not a whole lot of jump scares. It's a little heady. There there are moments that can be more 
tight and polished and in in or could you know just a little bit more dialogue between mm-hmm. characters to explain certain things it could have got them out of a lot of situations that were mm-hmm. unnecessary yep. but hey eh. but yeah no if, if if you're even slightly interested in this i would say go check it out i think you'll enjoy it um and honestly this is looking shaping up to be a pretty good year for horror i mean we got Candyman coming out yep. later this year. We got Halloween Kills coming out this year. That's right. So, we do. So I mean, you know, we got a we got a, a nice little lineup of movies, you know, horror movies coming out. And all right, all you know, right. So we're starting off, you know, in in March, pretty all right. You know, I'm like, hey, so this far, is so far, so good. All right, but. That is it for the show. Remember, you can always find us at our home, one giant leap for geeks. We are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, or anywhere else you get your podcasts. Make sure to show us some love. So go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, give us a rating, review us, follow us, and all that shit. And I'm going to take this opportunity to kind of plug uh, T Money in a little bit. Uh, Come check him out. He's got some really good food. And no, I'm not just saying that because I'm marrying the man. Uh, you can ask Mike. He's really, he's he knows what he's doing. I, I co-sign that, yes. Yes. Um, so check him out. He's on Facebook at T-Buds. That's T-E-E-B-U-D-S. Um, if you are an Instagram follower, you can follow him on T-Buds Cajun Cuisine. Um all of the so it's capital T bud with a capital B and then Cajun buds Cajun cuisine as well. Um, check them out, and if you're in the Bay City area, come check us out at the St. Patrick's Day parade on the 15th of March. Um, as far as us for a show, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, criticisms, you know, if you just want to say hi, you can always email us at official official OGLFG at gmail.com. 